But let's do one thing. Let's move on. Siddharth Khemka, the head retail research at Motilal Oswal, joins in now to talk about some numbers. Siddharth, hi. Good morning. I think the relief has come in on Indus and Bank with the margins being stable as opposed to the concern that after HDFC Bank, you know, all banks would see margin pressure. But what, what would you do with Indus and Bank as a stock now? Yeah, very good morning, Sonia. So, if you look at, uh, I think, uh, in the same, we are uh, pleased with the numbers. They are in line with our expectations, at least. Uh, if you look at uh, the net profit growing 17% uh, to 23 billion, uh, this was aided by a healthy revenue growth as well as lower provisions. Uh, loan growth was healthy at 20%. Traction we saw in both corporate as well as consumer books. Uh, deposits grew was at 13.4%. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, so overall, the, the the only concern that we see is that there has been some slippages, uh, fresh slippages uh, on a Q&Q basis, uh, mainly in the corporate uh, book, uh, and that too, uh, so, so the overall uh, corporate book uh, slippages increased to 3.12 billion, and of that, 1.4 billion was put into one large account. And there is some concern on the elevated slippages from the vehicle finance book. But overall, uh, we see that uh, uh, it doesn't, continues to report a good inline performance, healthy NI growth, controlled provisions, uh, asset quality remains uh, quite stable for them. And uh, we are expecting a good growth going forward, 21% earning growth over the next two years. ROE should, should improve. And uh, uh, the healthy provisioning in the MFI portfolio and moderation in the overall slippage run rate uh, should lead to a reduction in credit costs. So, so that should lead to an uh, ROE of 16%. And uh, hence, we continue to be very positive on Indus End. It is one of our preferred uh, picks uh, within the, uh, the, uh, the smaller private banks. Uh, we have a target price of uh, 1900 and a buy rating on Indus End. All right. Uh, uh, Siddharth, uh, <clears throat> stay with us. We'll come back to you for more. I uh, want to get your views on Tata Communication as well, uh, which has uh, done well. But uh, Siddharth Khemkaf Motilal Oswal is still with us. Siddharth, earlier we were talking about Indus and Bank's um, you know, positive performance. What about HDFC Bank? There was large delivery-based selling post numbers, a lot of disappointment there. But for long-term investors, is this a good time to be buying HDFC Bank or are you cautious? So, uh, Sunia, if you look at HDFC, uh, I, uh, the street's reaction is, uh, I, to some extent, you can say a bit exaggerated because the large holding uh, that the FIs and DIs have, uh, there is some concern in re with regards to the name compression. Uh, the cost to income ratio has gone up definitely. Uh, the bigger concern is on the deposits growth. I think that is where the street is most concerned that if that doesn't pick up, uh, the overall business growth could get hampered. And uh, if we have, what we have seen, the provisions which have uh, gone up, including the contingent provisions and uh, last quarter and as well as this quarter, the near-term expectation is not very strong from HDFC. Uh, having said that, you rightly said, if someone is looking at the longer-term picture, uh, the correction does offer a good entry opportunity. But uh, just keeping in mind that one needs to buy this for not for the next uh one or two quarters but for at least two to three years and things should improve uh with the overall improvement uh that uh, we are going to see in the overall credit growth in the in the uh the, the banking uh business and with the rate cuts that would be expected towards the later half of the year that should help uh elevate some concerns on the nims and that is where uh when i think uh, the stock should start reacting positively mm. Uh, Siddharth, uh, do you look at Shalbi? They've made an interesting acquisition of a hospital in Gurugram, a hospital which generates about 70% of its revenues from international uh, you know, patients. Uh, you know, so medical tourism, it's a big beneficiary of that, uh, the acquired company. So do you look at Shalbi and any thoughts on this? So, Rima, we don't look at uh, Shalbi. We have not uh, covered that. We cover some of the larger ones like Indian Hotel, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the... Uh, uh, the Apollo hospitals, the Medanta and Max. Uh, so uh, within that, our pref so overall, we are very positive on the uh, the uh, healthcare space. We believe that uh, there is a good growth. Uh, Shalbi has a niche, as you rightly said, created with the international uh, patients uh, that is doing well. Uh, but within our preference, we have a, a, a Medanta that is your uh, global healthcare, that, which is our preferred pick. Uh, we also have a positive view on Apollo hospitals as well as Max Healthcare. Mm. <clears throat> you know, by the way, the, the pre-open is on uh, with us and it's a strong start. I mean, it was just the first two minutes, so things will settle down. It won't be a 250-point higher start, but 
uh, should be decent. Uh, in any case, uh, Siddharth, the Tata Communications, uh, Reema was of course speaking with the management of uh, with the management earlier. Uh, there is an upgrade from IFL as well, and IFL is saying that you know it should be it, it's a strong one, especially given the context where everybody else has been reporting weak numbers. Any thoughts, briefly? Yeah, yeah, Prashant. So I think uh, results have been much better than expectations. The good positive surprise was uh, the the EBITDA uh, improvement uh, in the uh, the subsidiary Kalera that they have acquired. We were expecting a marginal loss. Uh, they have reported a strong uh, profitability on the EBITDA front. And with that, we have also upgraded the estimates. Uh, so uh, we have raised our estimates to factor in the higher EBITDA run rate. I think numbers are better. Uh, the only thing is the stock has also run up and there is some growth visibility. The management has clearly said that they would be looking at growth. Uh, they have set a very uh, ambitious target uh, in terms of uh, the uh, the next few years for the revenue. Uh, so they have a target of 280 billion rupees of revenue by 27 and with which would be supported by both organic and inorganic initiatives. So some of these inorganic initi initiatives that is leading to a higher debt uh, plus a little bit uh, less in terms of growth visibility. But nonetheless, very strong numbers. Uh, stocks should react positively. Uh, we have a neutral rating right now, given that uh, the the uh, valuations have a bit on the higher side. Uh, and we see limited room for upside, given the, uh, 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 the, the only uh, upside that we are looking is for improved growth visibility could be a vital for the re-rating of the stock from here as well. Siddharth, thank you very much uh, for joining in today.